Hello and welcome to my informal tutorial coloring the flashy flamingos from my newest book, Birdie, a fanciful bird coloring book. I'm coloring in the artist edition of this book, which is Spiral Bound, and we'll be using mostly Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils and we'll include the list of colors down below in the description. The first thing I'll do is uh, color in a very light layer of green on the leaves of the birds' bodies. And next I'm using um, Pink Matter Lake as well as Salmon to color the background um, of both of, of the flamingos. And again, I'm just using a very light layer. Uh, it's not perfect because I plan on going over uh, this color again um, and creating several different layers. My next step is to use some salmon. Uh, to transition from the pink um, as I move up towards the top of the bird's head. There are lots and lots of tiny little spaces to color um, on these birds, so it takes a little bit of patience, uh, but I find it pretty relaxing. So I'll just keep moving along here. Now I'm going to switch between salmon as I'm getting closer to the body of the flamingo um, over to the pink matter lake and I'll come and do a little bit of overlap um, just to blend those colors in and again I'm just doing light layers working in all these tiny little spots I don't normally use a lot of pink in my um, colorings, but it's appropriate for the flamingos. And what I'd like to do with this piece is have um, pink be the dominant color, um, but what I wanna do is build upon those pinks with um, a variety of hues just to give the piece more interest. So you'll see I'm doing the base layer in pinks and then as we move along, I'm going to be adding more colors.
I have had uh, people ask me in the past, you know, do I go into a coloring piece with a clear idea of where it's going and where all my colors are going to go down? And um, the answer to that is no. <laughs> I have a general idea of how I want something to look, um, but for the most part, I make it up as I go along. I choose a, a set of colors that I want to use um, as my my base or my overall um, palette, but then from there I'll just keep building and building until I have achieved the results I want. Um, sometimes it doesn't work out, sometimes it does. Um, and I usually consider those times that it doesn't work out as great learning experiences. So um, don't be afraid to experiment with your colorings. All right, now I'm going to start working in some new colors to provide a little bit of depth and interest. And here comes the cadmium um, yellow, actually dark cadmium yellow that I'm gonna use to add some highlights, a little color interest on the edges of these feathers. I'm also adding more yellow uh, toward the top of the bird's head, just for a little more color interest over the salmon. And now I'm going to start working with my salmon again and start building my layers or darkening my layers just a little bit. And I'll probably bounce back and forth between the salmon and the pink matter lake and whatever, for whatever other colors I decide to pick up as I go.
got a <clears throat> nice, uh, nice sharp middle purple pink. And I'm gonna start working in some shadow areas toward the bottom uh, edge of the neck, just to help give it a little bit of dimension. I'm not going for super realistic here, of course, um, but to make a piece look a little more interesting, it's nice to work in some, some dimension. Okay, let's add a little bit of red violet. This is going to darken up my shadow areas even more. And now I'm going to add in a little purple violet, uh, which is even darker. And sorry for the blurry print on the <clears throat> pencils. Uh, my camera's not focusing quick enough to get a clear picture. And back to the yellow. A lot of times I bounce back and forth between colors. Something catches my eye and <clears throat> I decide to go color that little section before I forget um, that I wanted to do that. <laughs> so you'll see I, I bounce around a lot and there's really nothing wrong with that. Um, I usually keep my pencils um, that I'm using for a particular piece on my desk so I don't forget what I'm actually using. It does take some patience when you're coloring um, to build up your layers, but you can see as I move along here, um, the more layers you add, the more um, color variety uh, you get, and the more saturated your colors become, uh, and things really start to take shape. So um, if you haven't really worked with a lot of layers in the past, give it a try. Start out with light layers and keep building those colors. Uh, if you have the patience, and you'll see some great results in the end. Depending on the paper and the pencils that you're using, you might notice little white spots appear in your coloring. Uh, this is especially noticeable during the early stages, um, but that's normal. That's just the pencil skipping over the tooth of the paper. So what you can do to blend that all out is use either a blender pencil like the Prismacolor uh, Colorless Blender, or uh, what I'll be doing for this piece um, is to use the Caran Dash Blender Bright uh, stick to get rid of those white spots and make my work look, look a little more saturated, but we'll get to that in a little bit. So I've been neglecting the greens um, up to this point, so I'm going to start building up my green layers um, 
on all of the foliage. And right now I'm using number 167 permanent green olive. And then I'll also be working in some chrome oxide green um, and probably a little more earth green yellowish as well. Okay, now for the darker green, the chrome oxide, and um, I do like a very sharp pencil tip, so um, I keep a little tea gall sharpener on my desk, and I usually have it set to five, but having a really nice sharp point um, for these little spots is, is pretty key. So now I'm going to use my Caran d'Ache Luminance um, Buff Titanium pencil to um, do a little bit of blending. Um, I really, really love the way this pencil in particular blends. Um, for some of you who know me, um, I do talk about this pencil a lot. There's something about it that's just hard enough but super creamy enough to really get some nice blending. Um, it does leave a little bit of a yellowish tint um, to some colors. In some ways it makes them look almost antique, which I think is kind of cool. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit here so you can see where my progress is overall. And I'm going to start working on the beaks with a little bit of salmon as a base coat. Or not a base coat, it's not paint, a <laughs> base layer. switch over to the pink matter um, around the edges to start giving it a little bit of form.
and now a little bit of yellow in the center. Not a lot, just a bit. And a little bit of magenta for around the edges of the beak area. Again, a little bit of form. beige red um, color 132 <clears throat> just to kind of do a um, little bit of blending um, just to help that form take shape and once I've got that ready I'm going to use the buff titanium pencil again to do my final blending of this area. Um, it just really helps to mush all those colors together. And it adds a little bit of highlight too. Time to start adding more colors. So right now I've got the Permanent Carmen, which is a pretty bright red, and I'm going to start working in um, my first layer um, for the flowers on the flamingo's neck. zoom back in here so you can see what I'm doing. Um, there's not a lot of contrast, at least on the screen that I'm looking at right now, um, between the um, two colors that I'm working with, the Carmen and the Sanguine, um, but they'll become more apparent as we go. Start working in some dark red.
and a little more Carmen, which needs to be sharpened. to the sanguine. So I'm going to be using this um, kind of a muted orange color um, to sort of uh, start blending in into the reds. So just mostly at the tip, tips of the flowers. And again there are a lot of white spots, at least that's what it looks like in the camera. In person it's not quite as speckledy, um, but I will be burnishing this. A little bit down the road here. I'm a little bit anxious to see how uh, these flower petals look once they're burnished. I'm going to use my Caran d'Ache Blender Bright Stick um, to blend and burnish these colors. One thing that's important to know about burnishing um, and even using some blender pencils is that once you do this it's very very difficult to add more colors over the top because basically the pencil or burnisher is crushing your paper um, and creating a very slick surface depending on the type of blender or burnisher you use. So approach with caution and I never, uh, you typically don't burnish something until I'm at the very end of um, my coloring project. Next I'm going to work in um, a couple of other colors for some of the other flowers, Pale Geranium Lake and then also the dark, um, dark Cadmium Orange. I'm not really sure what happens but sometimes when I'm coloring <clears throat> I really lose my train of thought and I'm so focused on what I'm doing between you know my hands and the paper and the colors that sometimes I lose words. <laughs> I'm sure some of you can relate. I'm going to use a little bit of this orange glaze along the very tips of these flowers. Just give them a little little dimension, a little highlight. Um, and the colors, it's hard to tell in the video, but um, 
there's just enough variety in the colors of the oranges and the reds um, that they really do sort of pop on the paper, especially once they're burnished. the top parts of the beaks um, I'm using a, a mix of cinnamon beige red and then um, beastry I'm not sure if that's exactly how it's pronounced but um, it's a really nice warm light brown so I'm basically coloring around the edges um, to give to give the beaks a little bit of form sure if anyone else does this but um, I do get kind of bored working with the same colors um, the repetition gets to be a little much so sometimes I'll take a break and switch to another part of my um, coloring uh, just for a little bit of variety uh, for my own sanity okay but back to the pinks um, I'm going to use um, pink matter lake to start working on the flowers around uh, the flamingos' faces.
here I'm just adding um, a base layer of green, the lighter green around the entire eye, and then adding a little bit darker green uh, toward the top, and then darkening again with my darkest green, um, just to give the eyes a little bit more, um, the illusion that the eyes are round. To give the flower petals around the eyes a little more depth, I'm going to use some Sanguine, just close up to the eye. Now, even though the actual flower petals around um, each of the flamingo's eyes are different, I'm still coloring them using the same color palette uh, just to have some symmetry between the birds.
All right, in this area, uh, we can really see how well that um, buff titanium pencil works to blend. And you can, uh, just from this camera angle, you can sort of see that yellowish tint that I was talking about earlier that gives, um, that can give some of your colorings kind of an antique look or vintage look, uh, which I really like. But I do love the way this pencil blends so much. It's one of my, my favorite favorite pencils to use. Okay, we're almost done blending here, and I think um, what I'm going to do is wrap this up for today, um, and we'll continue in the next video. Thank you so much for watching so far.